It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the NBA on 2K Sports. I'm Ernie Johnson. With me, oh, you know him, Shaquille O'Neal. You know this guy, too, Kenny the Jet Smith. For tonight's game, we'll be watching the Los Angeles Lakers as they go up against the Wizards in Washington. Well, it was Washington winning their last game against the Nets in Brooklyn. Six wins in their last 10 games. They'd like to play even better. Tonight, a chance to add to their win total. Well, we have a good one tonight. Two powerhouse clubs about to throw down. Kenny, how do you see this playing out? Well, you got two teams bring out their best in each other tonight, Ernie. So that's why this game is a must-see matchup. Tremendous individual matchups as well. And this will be a heated rivalry for years to come. I'm seeing something in the ball. And what ball? The crystal ball. Well, right. not that again. I think this could be a preview of these teams meeting in the postseason. Wow. Everyone in the league will also be watching. Wow. <sighs> Do me a favor. Yes. Hand me that ball. Can't touch it. Hand me that ball. Can't touch it. Just this. hand me that ball, please. Can't touch it. Why? Look. Oh! You don't have to ball. worry about that shtick anymore. You dropped the ball. The Lakers continue their journey as they play an interconference matchup in this road game. A time-honored tradition. The NBA on 2K Sports Sunday Night Hoops action. Delighted to have all of you with us here tonight. Chris Weber is joining us at the broadcast table alongside Greg Anthony and David Aldridge on the sideline. This is Kevin Harlan. The Wizards trying to take advantage of their home court in this one before leaving Washington. They've been playing very well lately. It's uh, been four wins for them in their last five games. And, well, for Washington, they were a team that no one knew quite what to make of entering the season. But as the year's gone on, it's become clear they're legit contenders. Yeah, but there are still some very strong teams above them, Greg. So, yes, they are contenders. But I, I wouldn't call them favorites just yet. And David Aldridge is standing by for our pregame report. David, good evening. Well, guys, we know how much of a trailblazer LeBron James has been. He's taken charge of his own free agency to ensure that he is almost always on a contender. He has made it clear he has no interest in being around mediocrity. Kevin? You're right, D.A. He wants rings and nothing less. Well, both these teams play defense, and they play it well. Chris, talk about some common characteristics among lockdown defensive teams. Well, I think the one consistent is pride. You have to have pride to play defense. You don't have to have your shot falling. You don't have to have anything but a competitive spirit to say, I'm not going to let this guy stop me. I'm not going to let this guy score, and I'm going to do anything I can to stop him. Then behind that comes great team communication, commitment from other players, help defense, because no one guy can really lock down one other player. But it has to be a culture, and it starts with that pride of not wanting anyone to score on you on your end of the floor. And now the Lakers starting group. Inside, we've got Kuzma and McGee. Ingram is out there with Rajon Rondo, and it's James in at the small forward position. And the in-between shot of James, a thing of beauty. I mean, he's so clever at taking advantage of this area of the floor. Back the wall, and Rondo sends it back. Parker against Kuzma. Passes it to LeBron. Rondo with the ball. He's picked up by Walt. Kuzma. And the three off target. And so it's Beal. He'll bring it up for the Washington Wizards. And this is the first season matchup for them against the Lakers team. In their meetings last year, they split the season series. Happens a fair amount between teams from the East and West. Uh, yeah, when you only see a team twice a year, it's tough to get a good read on them. It, it's why so many of these East-West matchups wind up with a split. Count it. Good. He must have a real good feel for the fadeaway. I mean, he uses it even when no one's on him. And Wall kicks to Portis. So first quarter just over a minute and a half in. Ariza outside. 
Clock at six. Ajahn Rondo with the rebound. A hand right in his face on the layup. Excellent defense that time in the paint. LeBron's shot is good. I like how James shoots off the pass. He knows how to catch the D by surprise. Poor Washington. They've gone one of three from the field to start this one so far. Wall passes to a reason. Back to Wall. From deep. Rebounded by McGee. Lakers have gone three of four from the field to start out the game. Parker with the steal. And here we go. Washington fast break. Parker's running. And the shot goes in. Parker's got five now. And here in the first, approaching three minutes played. Rondo kicks to Ingram. To the middle. Got a piece of it. And stolen by Portis. Now here's Wall. He picked up 27 points in the last win against the Nets in Brooklyn. Beal from long range. One up, one down. Two points with his first shot this game. Wow, Bill is a talented scorer. Outstanding in maintaining concentration despite the intimidating defense. Pass to Kuzma. Fades away. And yep, finally drops after rolling around the rim. Eight points for him. Now that makes them 80% from the floor early on. Let's see how long they can stay this hot. Wall finds Ariza. Rondo against Wall. Five to shoot. McGee with the block. And it's out of bounds. They say it was last touched by McGee. Howard's checked in for Portis. And Los Angeles making a change here as well. Josh Hart, he's checked in for Brandon Ingram. Just over three and a half minutes gone here in the first. And it's Rondo with the ball for the Lakers. Tipped away. Beal deciding where to go with it. And again, Washington, no good. He's got to be wondering, how did he miss that? I mean, he had all the space in the world. Kuzma can't get it to go. For the Lakers, they won their last contest that game against Charlotte. And looking at Jabari Parker, six foot eight, about 250 pounds. Greg, what's his best position? Shooting one. You know, I think he has a small forward skill, but with the way the game is changing, you could see him play some power forward as well. And I think his best fit might just be at the four because of the mismatch he can create. And Washington making a change here. Lions checked in. The Lakers also with a sub. Chandler's checked in. One shot. And that one falls for Wall. Well, Greg, you knew that the Laker front office and Magic were going to do everything they could to bring in big-name free agents, and they succeeded. They got the biggest name of them all in LeBron. LeBron coming to L.A. completely shifts the mindset of this organization. Team was very busy the rest of the free agent period as well. Still made very aggressive plays as this is a team that is looking to win now. And Parker with the block. And Bryant kicks to Wall. Sinks that one from a post. Wall's got his second basket of the night. Wall can't be stopped. He's remarkable at maintaining control through shots like this. Lakers trail by five. Guys are looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively for sure. And it's sent back by Howard. Beal the pass to Howard. Wall with the bounce pass. Parker's shot is off. For Los Angeles, they've gone four for nine from the field to start this game off. No coverage that time. Yeah, Rondo just knows how to wheel and deal. Has that exceptional feel for when one of his guys is open. 
Now Wolf. He has five. Here's Bryant. Shoots over Kuzma. Rebounded by the Lakers. They defeated Charlotte in their last game. And typically on the road, it's harder to get into a great rhythm offensively. But they did just that. Well, extremely accurate throughout the evening, I thought. The play call, they really fit the lineups they were rolling out. Now, here's Wall. He's a solid producer, averaging nearly 22 points a game. Upside Beal, six on the shot clock. The Wizards need to get a shot off here. The high post shot. Here's Howard. Last break, the Lakers. Here's James. And no good, had a chance to take the lead there. That is some tough defense there against one of the better finishers in our game. Bryant, Howard trying to free himself up. And there's Bryant, that's good on the assist by Wall. Oh, you can't lay that pass in there any better. LA's gone one or two from long range in the first quarter. It's LeBron with the drive. And you gotta be in awe, James, an offensive juggernaut. It's caught fire here tonight. So timeout called here, the first for Washington. Looking at the Wizards' past three seasons, C-Web, bottom 10 in the league in rebounding. And they have the most trouble on the defensive end. How about that? Think about that combination. When you give up second chance opportunities, you put yourself behind the eight ball. Washington making some changes. Green, he's checked in for Howard. Decker comes in for Jabari Parker. And Sedaransky subbed in for John Wall. And then for Los Angeles, Muscala, he's checked in for Chandler. Lance Stevenson comes in for Kyle Kuzma. And it's Reggie Bullock in for Rajon Rondo. Now, here's Sadoransky. He's guarded by Bullock. And there's the foul. It'll go on Josh Hart. That's his first foul. And Bryant gets to Decker. Playing a little cornerback there. Anticipates the pass and jumps the route. Here's Bullock. And another three for the Lakers. Oh, great ball movement there. Here's Sadoransky, currently averaging almost six points a game. Outside, Green. Out to the right wing. Now, here's Decker. Defense is right there. Sadoransky gets the bucket. Oh, wow, he's only going to hit that shot about one out of ten times. The Lakers in the lead. Hart kicks to Stevenson. Back to Hart. Over Beal. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. Well, we look at this. Josh Hart. You know, he's a guy that played his way into the rotation. He was the 30th pick taken overall in 2017 and ended up with a lot of minutes as a rookie. And the first one drops. And Chris with Hart, you can see the improvement in his play each time he came out onto the floor. Oh, yeah, he's very good from three, and he's nice on D. You know, he said himself that he doesn't want to be just a three-point guy or a defensive guy. Uh, he wants to have all the skills. It won't be the case if he continues to improve as he has. Now, here's Sadoransky. Pushing it up. Here's Stevenson, here's Bullock, and two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the content. And now a look at LeBron James here. Tremendous numbers for him over the last 10 games. He's putting up 31 points per, eight assists, and two and a half steals. What incredible numbers. He has been a beast. Yeah, impossible to check right now. When he's on a roll like this, not much you can do to stop him. That free throw, no good. Looking at big men around the NBA, which are the best triple threats? Guys who can shoot, drive, and pass out of that screen. I think of two, one being Anthony Davis. The fact that 
He can get his shot. He's so quick. And he's a good post-up player as well and can face the basket. And then DeMarcus Cousins, I don't know if there's a better big man, a better center than when it comes to him. He can take you out on the three-point line. He can dribble and get a three. He can take you out on the three-point line, set a flare screen, catch and shoot the three. He can get it at the three-point line, drive you to the hole, get an am one. And then he can take you on the post and just bully and posterize you as well. So I, I don't think there's one that comes to mind with a better skill set than Boogie Cousins. And that list is growing. They've wasted no time settling into their offense. Upside Beal over in the corner. Decker drills the three-pointer. Decker's got his first bucket of the game, and he's on the board for three. Well, that's a look they always want him to take, because if he's got the space, he's got the green light. Hart kicks to Bullock. Lakers working the ball around now. Stevenson against Bryant. Just five to shoot. Muscala. And a missed layup. Yeah, good interior D there prevents the deuce. Oh, wonderful anticipation. He needs to play perfectly then with the quick reaction time. Timely passing leads to assists, and that's been the recipe for success. Bullock passes to Stevenson. Over Green, and it's Stevenson missing. Pretty high percentage look with the D playing off. Just couldn't knock it down. And he gets the basket. Officials blowing the whistle, so a chance at the line for one more. Oh, Bill is a skilled distributor. I mean, he has a sense for when one of his teammates has a clean look at the bucket. Largely out there for his terrific shooting range, C-Webb, is Thomas Sadoransky. He's a pretty good playmaker as well. Team player. Uh -uh. I mean, he understands that he needs to get his shot within the floor of the offense. If, if it's not there, he's quick to move the ball and generally makes one good shot. decisions. The Lakers with LeBron wasted no time trying to surround him with free agent signings, Greg, to help round out the supporting cast. Names came in rapid succession after LeBron committed. Caldwell Pope, Rondo, Stevenson all joined in short order. We'll see how far this team goes, but you cannot deny how interesting things have gotten with this roster. Green. The shot's good on the assist by Sadoransky. And the Wizards lead by five. Hits the moving target with the lead pass. He made it look so easy. From deep three-point range, rebound by Muscala. Los Angeles has gone two or three from deep so far in this game. Here's Stevenson, and all around the rim that time before dropping in. Stevenson's got his second bucket of the night. Here's Washington now, stringing it together. They've got an 11-2 run going. Outside, Beal. Here's the three. Washington with the first shot clock. Out of bounds. The Lakers will take possession. Now we get a chance to check out the standings out west. Already we're in December. You take a look at the Warriors. They've been in peak form as we've watched them play some tremendous basketball with an eye toward the postseason. And, of course, the Lakers sitting directly below them just one spot down. And you know, for the Lakers, they have caught the entire league off guard. This was not a position anyone thought they'd be in at this stage of the season. But yeah, Greg, I mean, they had a plan coming into the year. I mean, they stuck to it, and it's worked to perfection. Hart, no good. Wizards leading by three. One oh two left to play in the first. Controls the rebound and puts it back up and in. Just in a perfect position to grab that rebound and then get the putback. For the Washington Wizards, they won their last contest that game against the Brooklyn Nets. Kicks it to Muscala from deep. Rebounded by the Wizards. They're coming off that win against the Nets. And anytime you come off the bench, you know your role. And that night, it was about scoring. 
Well, well, on the road, you need as many contributors as you can find. The reserves definitely help fuel the win that time. And that one, good. Such pure shooting from Bill. I mean, Bill is a knockdown scorer from these mid-range spots. Some tough offensive sets. They want to turn it around. Yeah, right now, you just need a bucket to get some momentum. Now, here's Stevenson. D right on him. Los Angeles needs to get off a shot here. And they force the shot clock violation. Great D. And so it's the Washington Wizards bringing the quarter to a close with a seven-point lead. And their three-point shooting has paved the way for them. And we've got more NBA action on 2K Sports coming your way after this break. The Wizards with a bad habit of playing down to the level of competition, Bradley Beal says it has got to change. I think our biggest problem was not respecting our opponents, you know, thinking it was going to be easy. We have to realize that everybody in this league is a pro. Everybody's capable of winning. Everybody's capable of scoring. And it's tough to win in this league. So it's important each and every night that we come out with the focus and mentality that, yeah, we're a good team, but we still have to produce on the floor. Well, the Wizards are a team with a lot of confidence, Greg, but you have to watch out for overconfidence. Like he said, it's about respecting your opponent and bringing maximum level effort every time. And for those of you just tuning in, the second quarter of action is where we're at right now. And what stands out to you from Washington in this one? Yeah, it didn't take them long to get that transition game going. Well, this roster is built for guys with speed. They're running the floor hard in the first quarter. Taking a look at the Lakers. Reggie Bullock is out there with Ingram. And there's JaVel McGee. And it's Chandler. And it's Stevenson in at the small forward. And here's Chandler who brings it up for Los Angeles. Seven-point differential. They'll be off to Brooklyn for a meeting with the Nets after this one. And that will conclude a four-game road trip. That's what we're talking about in terms of the activity level defensively. you got to protect the rim. Well, that takes physical ability, good timing, those two things that he possessed. Not the tightest of D on him, though, but not the best of finishes either. But Luke Walton, he's definitely a coach players like to play for. I mean, it helps that he was a player not too long ago. Both stars and role players appreciate the candor and the opportunity he provides them. Lock at six. Saturansky against Ingram. Here's Stevenson, and it's going to be a 24-second shot clock violation. They turn it over. A chance to check out Los Angeles' upcoming schedule. On Tuesday, they're off to Brooklyn to face off with the Nets. Then on Friday, they'll be facing Drew Holiday and the New Orleans Pelicans. And that game against the Warriors, uh, this is what the fans have been wanting to see. Two of the best teams in the league duking it out and and you know whoever gets the win is going to be viewed as the team to beat washington calls timeout as the teams head into this timeout a chance for the coaches now to map out some plays for the next few minutes and a chance for the players to rehydrate with some gatorade that's important if they want to make sure they don't wear down later in the game absolutely over the course of a game you have to stay hydrated here's what washington's going with right now Dwight Howard, he's checked in for Bobby Portis. Jabari Parker comes in for Sam Decker. And John Wall subbed in for Sadoransky. And then for the Lakers, Kyle Kuzma's checked in for Lance Stevenson. Arjan Rondo is subbed in for Reggie Bullock. Lakers trail by nine. Ingram kicks to Kuzma. Ingram with it. He's picked up by Ariza. The wide open look here for Kuzma. And the Lakers with another miss. A slight advantage for them in the rebound department, but that oftentimes is all it takes. Wall against Rondo. Over in the corner, Green. The tray. Kuzma pulls it in. Wall with the steal. Kicks it out to Ariza. 
He's looking for Howard and finds him. Another shot. Good on the jump shot. Ariza's got his first two points. Uh, amazing job by Ariza in, in the pick and roll there. Knowing exactly what to do and taking what the D gives him. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on John Wall. That's his first foul. Knocks it loose. That's going to be out of bounds. Los Angeles will retain possession. And looking at some numbers for Ariza, how his last 10 games have gone. He's putting up about eight points a game, over two and a half steals and three assists. And guys, he's making winning plays. It's as simple as that. Not a star player per se, but he makes his presence felt. Well, yeah, lately he's been overachieving a little bit. Hopefully this is a sign of greater things to come. Now here's Rondo. 14 points from him the last game against the Hornets in Charlotte. And look, it was more than his scoring. He was dominant on D. His still numbers for that game were crazy. And teams have nights like this when the shots that usually drop just shot, won't gentlemen. go down. That's when you have to rely on your defense, and that's the only way to stay in the game. And Trevor Ariza, such a steady veteran. I mean, just long, a versatile defender, can also knock down the triple. When you look at how far he's come since he entered the league as really just a raw athlete, it's a credit to his work uh, ethic, gentlemen, no doubt about shot. it. He has mastered shot. his role. Free throw drops for Ariza. Well, Chris, some teams already realize a championship just is not going to be in their future this season. How should those kind of teams approach the rest of the season? Give your best. Right, yeah. Give your all. We're competitors. This is the NBA, the greatest league in the world, the greatest basketball players assembled. And so, one, you have to respect the game. You have to respect the monotony. You have to respect the work. You have to respect the travel. Uh, and you have to be thankful, <laughs> by the way. And when you put all that together, uh, you go into your job and you do the best. Focus on getting better every day. And, and there's a good chance uh, that, that you will. And making sure that you give the fans what they're paying for. Hey, that's what it's all about. If you don't entertain the fans, hey, something's wrong with you. If you, if you, <laughs> if you can't have fun with 20,000 screaming <laughs> fans and the kids with their popcorns and all the stuff going on, if you don't remember what it's about, Kev, yeah, you kind of, uh, you kind of lost your mojo already. Okay, well, let's check in with David Aldridge, who's reporting from the sideline. Well, of course, there's no shortage of storylines in Los Angeles. Now, last season, some people thought that Lakers coach Luke Walden had lost his players. The front office seemed slow to come to his defense. Now, Walton was a high-profile hire from Golden State in 2016, and you wonder if the Lakers will remain committed to their young coach if they can't start winning more regularly. Kevin? All right, David, thank you. Here's Kuzma. He's been patient so far. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. Wall attacking. Parker in a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. That's on LeBron James. No two question. Shot. He got bumped Five. on that shot. Elbow. Two. Washington shooting their fifth and sixth free throws of the game. And typically a strength of their 79% on the season. Two shots. He misses the free throw. A somewhat dubious honor, Chris. Last year, the Wizards became one of the most dangerous eight seeds in recent memory. Yeah, so much natural ability on that roster. And, and Kevin, was that because they uh, underperformed during the season and should have been a higher seed? Can't give them credit for that. Uh, I'm not sure any team wanted to play them in the first round, but the old cliche, you are what the record says you are, was proven correct. Now here is McGee. An 11-point game for him in the win against the Hornets in Charlotte. And Rondo is a dime dropper. One of the best passing point guards our game has ever seen. Here's Wall. It's a 14-point game. Oh, 
And the pass to Howard. Parker outside. Six to shoot. No good that time. And it's the Lakers the other way. Pass to Kuzma. Good, and the assist goes to James. Kuzma's got his first basket. Oh, good at taking initiative inside. Once Kuzma is near the hoop, he's focused on scoring. And here's Wall. He's got five. Outside, Green. He dishes it to Wall. And there's the call on Howard. That's his first foul. Ryan needs to check in for Washington. Lakers trail by 12. And timeout called. Luke Walton has had enough. Last season, C. Webb, the Lakers made an effort to play with a high pace in their game. Well, this is the direction the team wants to strive towards. I mean, second in the league last season in pace of play. The players and the front office all want to get back to that Showtime era Lakers style of play. Playing as a team so crucial. Let's see the NBA's best. The Lakers second. And, and you know, when your team has a lot of assists, it's testimony to the unselfishness, the, the patience, the ball movement, the player movement. They have shown all of that. It's a nice passing here by Los Angeles. Ariza against Ingram. Back to Rondo. LeBron outside. Clock at four. Pulls it up. They get the rebound. Here's McGee. And he'll shoot free throws here. Clearly fouled on that shot that time. The whistle blowing. And the foul goes against Washington. Chris, you had a lengthy NBA career. From what you observed, talk about the differences and how various coaches hold practices and, uh, and try to teach. You just want to keep guys motivated. You want guys to listen and then execute. And whatever you can do to get their ear, gain their trust, and then get them to go out there and execute. So if you're on a veteran team, uh, you may have a smaller practice but with more intensity, meaning maybe you only practice an hour of live work going back and forth from scrimmaging whereas if you're a young team you might be able to expect two hours of scrimmaging every day do the players understand the culture do they understand the tenets of the offense and the defense and usually coaches coached by that need and necessity of the team as opposed to just having one structure and so uh, in Washington we had three of days oh. during training camp as opposed to in Sacramento later in my career uh, it would be one practice because uh, we're all old we need to make sure that we get the most intensity out of this practice and then save our legs for the game now here's Parker six points for him Wall finds Bryant over James and Bryant the bucket on the assist by Wall Wall's got three assists tonight. I mean, a very skilled finisher inside. Even with defenders close, he'll find a way to score. Ariza against Rondo. McGee with it. He's playing a pretty big role for him at the offensive end, averaging about 12 and a half points a game. Passes to Kuzma. He's looking for LeBron and finds him. Over Ariza. Whoops, there's the 24-second shot clock violation, so they'll turn it over. We know that stars, especially superstars, get some level of benefit from the refs. What do you think of that? Is, and is that good for the game? I think it's, the refs should always be fair. I think, yes, uh, you're going to get the benefit of the doubt if you're a James Harden and you can cross everyone over and you get 10 free throws a game. He earns those most nights. But, yeah, it's going to be some nights in which he gets a call or two here because as an offensive player, you want to be so aggressive that you put the referees in a tough position to make a tough call and to see what that was. Fans want to see the best players play, not sit. So you have to be judicious with how far you go, but just sometimes slip in the tendencies. And I used to get so mad when all I would do is go challenge the shot. The human kickstand would kick his leg out. The ref would say, I fouled him. I didn't foul him. And the best actor in the world would get to go to the line, get a four-point. And, okay, Caleb, what, what was the question again? Stars. Oh, superstars getting oh, I don't know what stop. Next what stop. <laughs> Lakers trail by 14. And that's a foul. Called on Bradley Beal. That's foul number two for him. 
And the next one puts him in the bonus. Here's Kuzma. 23 points for him the last game against Charlotte. LeBron dishes to Muscala. And it's sent back by Howard. Howard, one of the league's most feared rim protectors in the league. And they've only got a slight edge on the boards, but it, it just feels a lot bigger. And they call the foul, so he's got the and one chance here to make it a three-point play. He's one of the guys having a solid game for them, but as a whole, they've been lacking. LeBron signing a four-year deal with the Lakers. Greg, many speculated it might happen, but it was still a shock to many. It makes sense from LeBron's standpoint. Son plays in L.A. for high school. LeBron has a lot of business interests as well. And also what's interesting is that when LeBron's contract ends, his son could potentially be coming into the NBA as a rookie. Free throw good, LeBron. Well, LeBron making one of the biggest flashes over the summer, signing with the Lakers, and Greg, it happened pretty fast. And the Lakers front office had been recruiting LeBron hard. LeBron talked with Kobe about his time with the organization and what to expect before making his decision. Kobe's words seem to be a big factor for LeBron. Once again, the Mamba doing everything he can to help the Lakers. Stevenson against Parker. Stevenson outside. Dishes it to LeBron. And LeBron throws it down. Oh, that's just awesome recognition from James. Love how he rolls with the purpose after setting the pick. And Zedaransky kicks to Beal. That shot off. Good D by LeBron. Lakers trail by 11. And Hart has it in the corner. And a miss there with a chance to cut the lead to single digits. It's a plus five advantage for them in rebounding after that one. Outside for Beal. No good on the three. But he had two three-pointers in the opening quarter. It hasn't been able to connect yet here in the second. And LeBron throws it down. Oh, come on. You can't allow James to get position down low. Once he does, he's looking to dunk it. Now, here's Sadoransky. Five points in the game. Pass to Howard. Got a piece of it. Back to Sadoransky. And stolen by LeBron. And here we go. Fast break. James has got it. And wrestling for it there, but no one has possession. We'll have a jump ball. Knocked loose, so it's the Lakers now. Beal on the double team. And a bit of a battle here for the ball. The official signals a jump ball here. And here is Los Angeles now. LeBron passes to Hart. He kicks it to Stevenson. Six to shoot. Over Bryant. Stevenson can't hit. Wizards leading by nine. Here's Beal. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact. And he'll go to the line for two. And Bradley Beal earning that first All-Star nod in 2018. A top 20 score. He can hurt you from just about anywhere on the court. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. That free throw, no good. 
And Beal just turned 25. Have we seen his best, or do you think he can take his game to even another level? Uh, I think the key is going to be him staying healthy. The injuries have kind of plagued him early in his career. With health, he'll be able to refine his game and fortify his defense and expand that offensive repertoire. He hits the second from the line. And they're really getting more points at the free throw line here in the second quarter. Los Angeles calls timeout. Yeah, and we've watched Bill take major steps forward in this game. I mean, think about this, especially with creating off the bounce for himself and for us. And a chance here to check out some stats on Lance Stevenson. How his last 10 games have gone. He's averaging eight points, three assists, and two rebounds. And the numbers won't wow you, but I like the effort he brings to the table each and every night. He hustles, does the little things, just a good complimentary guy who need on your team. And you can just see Beal's confidence growing every single season. He knows he can be the best player on the court on any given night. Coaches trust him, his teammates trust him, the fans trust him. He's a tremendous catalyst for his team. The Lakers have made six of their seven attempts at the line in this one. This season, in general, has not been kind to them at the free throw line. Only about 71%. Tyson Chandler is checked in for the Lakers. Now here's Beal. A 26-point game for him in the win against Brooklyn. Not to mention his defense. I mean, he was a terror. He came away with three steals and caused a whole lot of headaches. The shot by Sadoransky, no good. They haven't been able to count on his scoring tonight. But still, here they are in the league. How about the rough road travel last year by the Wizards? John Wall missed exactly half of the season. Uh, the team uh, uh, were sending uh, verbal shots back and forth from teammate to teammate. Uh, the team never got in sync. Uh, they failed to meet uh, expectations. Now, here's Sadoransky. He has five. Decker dishes to Beal. Down low and stolen by LeBron. Here's Hart. It's not going to go for him. Now Washington takes it the other way. At one point, they led by 16. And talking about the Wizards, even though Wall missed 41 games, they still ended up fourth in the league in assists. Oh, yeah. I mean, they actually shared the ball pretty well after Wall went out. Uh, you know, remember the saying, everybody got to eat B. Uh, but anyway, uh, they won 10 out of the 14 games. But then opponents adjusted. Uh, ultimately, by season's end, the Wizards barely made the playoffs. 132 left here in the second. And after that solid opening quarter, you can see now he is definitely starting to cool off. Look, he doesn't waste time. Once he gets the rebound, he does what he should. Goes right back up with it. Now, Sadoransky. Beal up top over Hart. And he didn't get quite enough under that one. Yeah, that's just poor decision making. He's got to be better in those situations. Well, I'd love to hear his explanation to coach right there. I mean, that should be an interesting conversation. No good on that one. Well, finally, he's getting himself to the line. He's gotten much more aggressive as the game is going on. So for the Wizards, Green comes in for Bryant. And it's Brown in for Beal. He's good on the second. Oh, you love how effortless James makes this game look. Everything comes easy to him. And stolen by LeBron. And here's the fast break. LeBron leading the way. And we've got an update here. So let's catch up with David Aldridge. Well, Bradley Beal became a first-time All-Star in 2018. But he knows the next step, becoming a better leader. He said, sometimes I can be nonchalant, locked into myself and not saying anything. It's just my personality, and as a leader, you can't be that way. You have to encourage your teammates and don't be afraid to say things. Don't be afraid to be a leader. Kevin? Good story, D.A. Thank you. And see, Webb, so many talk about the 2001 Lakers and how they might be one of the greatest teams to ever play. You saw their talent firsthand. What do you think? Uh, I think they have Kevin, a Hall of Fame coach, uh, two 
uh, the greatest players to ever play the game is Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Mind Bryant the and uh, right there that 15 and one in the playoffs that's the gold standard I mean Kobe and Shaq were very motivated that year and uh, you know that, I think they're in the conversation for uh, best team ever and, and the former Hoya Green a, a rangy forward who can both score and defend from all areas of the floor now here's Stevenson He's guarded closer. Now the dish to LeBron. Over Green, and he could not get that one to go. Out of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. Jeff Green picks one up. When James gets you in the air, I mean, you're toast. He's superb at going right into the contact. And Washington making a change here. Ariza's checked in, and the second free throw, good. We've got a nine-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. And Zodoransky kicks to Ariza. Five to shoot. Here's Portis. Nice pass. Run him to the rack perfectly for the layup. And the Wizards lead by six. Here's Hart. 11 points last game. The pass to LeBron. Over Green. And Green's defense, very important to this team's success. The way he gets up in the face of whoever he's guarding, it becomes infectious to the rest of his guy. And that does it for the first half of play. Wizards lead by six. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thanks a lot. LeBron, you're doing well, but the rest of the team's kind of struggling offensively. What are they doing to take everybody else away? Uh, you know, they're doing a good job of keeping the ball in front of them, just contesting our shots. Uh, you know, we got to continue to move the ball from one side to another. And uh, get some good looks, but when we get them looks, we got to knock them down as well. We'll see if they fall in the second half, LeBron. Thanks. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. And we'll be back after halftime as the third quarter gets underway. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, welcome back. It is Bedlam here. The hometown crowd loving that first half. I'm Ernie Johnson along with Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. Bradley Beal had it going on in the first quarter. He had nine points, two rebounds, and three assists. And let's get your thoughts, Kenny, on the Wizards. I love the motion on offense. Guys are moving. The ball is moving. It's a very nice approach to the game. And one the defense absolutely could not keep up with. Shaq, what was your takeaway on the Lakers? Well, I love that they were forceful at their offensive end. They got the shots they wanted. They played aggressively and got to the line. A strong attacking mindset. I like it. We'll see if they bring the same attitude in the second half, though. That about wraps it up. Time now for the second half of the game. We go to Kevin Harlan for the call. So many places to visit here in Washington, D.C., and that certainly is one of them, the Supreme Court building. Welcome back, everyone. Second half of basketball upon us. We may be in for an exciting finish based on how close of a game it's been so far. What can you say, LeBron James? What an impressive effort today. And through the first two quarters, he was extremely aggressive, picked up a number of steals. Oh, well, you take some chances. Sometimes you can get burned, but you hope more often than not that you can be a catalyst for your team. And in that first half, we saw a pretty tight battle. We'll soon find out what sort of adjustments were discussed during the half. All at point with Beal to his side. They're the deadly backcourt pair. Bobby Port is out there with Jabari Parker. And it's a reason. In at the three, the small forward. That's the five on the four for the Wizards. A pull up and good. Got the English that time as it falls. Kuzma's got it going here in the start of the second half. The first points in the third quarter for the Lakers. Wizards leading by four. And here's Wall. Outside Beal. Back to Wall. 
Here's Parker. And that comes off the assist by John Wall. Wall's got four assists now tonight. I love the unselfishness from Wall. When someone flashes open, I mean, he's right there with the pass. McGee's shot is off. Yeah, good interior D there prevents the deuce. Oh, wonderful anticipation. He needs to play perfectly then with the quick reaction time. Yeah, not a great shot there, especially when you got a lockdown defender guarding you. you know, I mean, there had to be a better option that time down the court. That's just a missed opportunity. And I love the momentum he's building. Last game, he, he was just as dominant. And defensively, you know he's feeling good right now. And, and, and as the opposing team, you better adjust your scheme accordingly. Now, here's Ariza. Taking a look at his stats, he's averaging around nine and a half points a game. And he gets contact and the whistle Two on the shot. Coming. Two shots coming up. And there were a lot of hidden gems, Chris, in that 2017 draft. And Kyle Kuzma is right at the top of the list. Well, Kuzma was taken with the 27th overall pick, but he looks like a top five pick, if you ask me. He probably was just for being a three-year player at Utah, but that time in college allowed him to hone his skill set. I mean, he came into the league with a wide variety of very polished moves. And he knocks down the first one. Now, when Bill is healthy, he's a force on the court. He's a fantastic shooter with a lightning quick release. And both free throws good for Beal. Third quarter here, over a minute and a half into it. LeBron with it. He's picked up by Parker. James looking around. Inside. Here's Kuzma. Great D that time from Beal. Look, it would be a huge boost for them if he could start knocking these down. It's tipped. Rondo with it. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. To the paint. And stolen by Portis. Here's Beal. That's good. And so Wall with the assist. Wall's got his fifth assist in this one. And it's Rondo with the ball for the Lakers. It's stolen by Wall. From downtown. It's hauled in by Los Angeles. LeBron's got rebound number seven for him tonight. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on John Wall. That'll be his second foul of the game. Los Angeles calls timeout. Oh, yeah, Kevin. And what, what a quick rise to the top has been for John Wall. He was drafted number one overall, the sixth fastest player ever to reach 2,000 points and 1,000 assists. And a quick look now at the NBA scoring leaders. Fifth on the list, LeBron James. And his contribution to his team offensively cannot be understated. He is always leading the way for them with his ability to put up points. Parker against Kuzma. To the middle, here's Ingram, and the layup's good off the glass. Ingram's got his first points of the night. And with so many great point guards in this league, sometimes John Wall doesn't get all the credit he deserves. Uh, and it all comes back to winning. Stats alone aren't enough. Once Wall gets that first ring, the conversation will change. Time called here. The Wizards decide to talk it over. And Kevin, he saw his, his guys just a little sluggish out there. Oftentimes, a timeout like this allows you to kind of just reset. Washington leading now by five. Outside Portis. Back the wall. Sinks that one from the post. Wall's got his third bucket of the night. Yeah, Kevin, it's all about his length, his explosiveness. Wall is one of the best point guards in this league. We talk about finishing in traffic. For Los Angeles, they've gone three or five to start the second half, developing a nice rhythm out there. 
Pass to Kuzma. Here's James. Got a piece of it. Ball against Rondo. It's deflected. Just under three and a half minutes played here in the third quarter. Ingram outside. Ball against Rondo. Over Ariza. There it goes. It's in, and the Wizards' lead is cut to just five on the basket from Rondo. And he's not going to pass up that one. And trust me, he shouldn't. He's south from that in-between there. Now here's Parker. He's got eight. Pass to Fortis. Stolen by McGee. And Trevor Ariza is going to pick up a foul here. That's his first foul. Howard's checked in for Bobby Portis. Muscala, he's checked in for the Lakers. Kuzma passes to Muscala. Ingram against Beal. Ingram right side. Shot clock at six. Rondo kicks to McGee. Here's Kuzma. Jabari Parker comes up with the rebound. Parker's got his fifth rebound right now in the game. All taking his time here. Ariza outside. And again, Washington no good. Lakers trail by five. Pass to Kuzma. And Kuzma slams it in. Wow, you see how fast he got off the ground? I love whenever Kuzma rises up to throw it down. And Wall kicks to Parker. Here's Beal. That drops, and it comes off an assist from Parker. Beal's got 15. That's the kind of aggressive and assertive play they need as we get closer and closer to crunch time. Here's Kuzma. Count that one. He's got eight. His touch has been terrific this quarter. Most of what he puts up is going down. Wizards leading by three. Wall finds Beal. Now here's Ariza. Rebounded by the Lakers. Muscala's got four rebounds in this game. Ingram dishes to Rondo. That one misses. Now Washington takes it the other way. At one point, they led by 16. They've got the Hawks ahead of them in their next game, and it's in Atlanta. And that'll be the first of a two-game road trip for them. Not a very consistent quarter for him in terms of a shoot. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on John Wall. And that'll be his third foul so far. Washington making some changes. Ryan is checked in for Jabari Parker. Decker comes in for Trevor Ariza. And Sedaransky subbed in for Bradley Beal. And Los Angeles will go for a different look here. Tyson Chandler is checked in for JaVale McGee. Lance Stevenson comes in for Kyle Kuzma. Reggie Bullock, he's checked in for Ingram. And it's Josh Hart in for Rajon Rondo. And so it's Wall. He brings it up for Washington. They lead by one. Kicks to Bryant. Wizards passing it around. Outside, Wall. Six on the shot clock. On the wing. Good, he hits the jump shot. And the IQ of Wall is impressive. And when you mix it with the speed, it's just a nightmare to handle in the screen and roll. And there's the pass to Chandler. Back to Hart. Good D by Howard. Wizards leading by three. Decker gets the bucket. Decker's got his second bucket of the night. And just a step ahead of the D in that possession there, making the pass. Nice assist. Here's Hart. Lays it up and banks it in. Hart's got seven. 
absolutely fearless. I mean, a, a nice, subtle adjustment there going up against Wynn. Well, this is just another case where being aggressive means out. Tries again. The kick out to Wall. The shot's good on the assist by Sadoransky. 11 points for Wall. And Wall has great size at his position and strength. He uses it very well close in. Lakers trail by five. Now here's Bullock. Eight points for him. Hart the pass to Bullock. Stolen by Decker. Oh, and a fast break for the Wizards. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. And here's a look at some numbers for Howard. He's been on a remarkable tear this past month. Second in field goal percentage. 16th in blocks. And don't forget, top 20 in the league in rebounds per game. He's got a great nose for the ball. And you mentioned it. He's the second best shooter in the league right now. Quick trigger with just a little bit better footwork. He could take over that top spot. The first one falls. Jeff Green, he's checked in for Washington. Parker comes in for Sadoransky. Wagner, he's checked in for the Lakers. Caldwell Pope comes in for Reggie Bullock. He's off on the second. Lakers trail by six. Parker with the steal. Now here's the fast break. Parker leading the way. It's tipped. Stolen by Stevenson. Pass to Hart. Here's Wagner. To the inside. Caldwell Pope kicks to Hart. Four on the shot clock. Over Bryant. Hart, no good. Great move on his way to the bucket there. Just couldn't get it to fall. Here's Parker. The Lakers with the rebound. Stevenson outside to the middle. Here's Wagner. That's good, and it's Stevenson with the assist. Stevenson's got three assists tonight. Once he gets open on the low block, it's just a matter of getting him the ball. Passes it to Hart. And there's the foul. It's on Sam Decker. That is his first foul of the game. Beals checked in for Washington. The Lakers also making some changes. LeBron, he's checked in for Wagner. And it's Brandon Ingram in for Caldwell Pope. Count the basket and the foul. Bradley Beal picks one up. And Ingram, he's still getting his weight up. And looking pretty strong that time. Oh, yeah, look. You can see how Ingram has developed in his short time in the NBA. Got a little bit stronger attacking the basket. He's the former number two pick, and he's gained steam with confidence. And maybe one day he can be an elite scorer. He's starting to develop a little bit of a killer instinct when he has the ball. One shot. That one falls for Ingram. And with Ingram, he now wants the ball and wants to attack defenders each time down the floor. Yeah, Kevin, and that doesn't just mean he's doing it with scoring. He's become a great drive and kick playmaker as well. Now, for me, the next step for him is to emerge as a vocal leader, uh, something that the L.A. office is hoping he can become. And that's what he does. I mean, he is a bucket getter. Stevenson finds James. To Stevenson. To the paint. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. It's going to be on John Wall. James is a workhorse down deep. When he's close to the basket, you better wrap him up. For the game, shooting five of seven at the line. And you, you know, something I remember from their last game was how good he was at the line. And he makes the first. And both free throws good for LeBron. 
And it's Wall with the ball for Washington. It's a one-point game. Outside, Beal fires for three. And that comes off the assist by John Wall. Wall's got six assists here tonight. The Lakers shooting at 44%. Pretty reasonable. On the wing, Stevenson. Covered by Parker. A shot's good from LeBron. LeBron's got 30. James, such a terrific interior score. Simple, under control, and on the money. Wall passes to Green. Outside, Beal. Very pretty alley -oop -oop. Oh, what a pass. And then he lays it in with the circus move. Mm, so smooth. Lakers trail by four. To the inside, James. Green with the rebound. 127 left to play here in the third. Here's Wall. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. Well, John Wall, Derrick Rose, and Russell Westbrook came into the league around the same time. All of them in the conversation for most athletic big point guard in league history. Of the three, uh, I think John Wall, the most prolific playmaker, always looking to create for his teammates. The first free throw is good. And John Wall is such a multifaceted game, it almost feels wrong to call him a pure point guard. But that's what he is, isn't he? Just loves to set up his teammates. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And he can score at a high level, but that helps him as a playmaker. Guys thrive playing alongside him because he commands so much attention. And so John Wall nails both of them. And give Wall credit. I mean, he's fought through the knee injuries, an elite difference maker out there on the floor. Stevenson against Parker. Pass to James. To the middle. Chandler dishes to James. Back to Chandler. And there's the whistle. Three-second violation. And let's take a look at the playmaking here. This chart with the assist totals split between the front court and the back court tonight for the Lakers. Well, you love to see your front court that really is so gifted with the ball. Great vision, court awareness. They have been a major part of the offensive flow in this game, and what a luxury to have bigs that can pass. Back to Wall. Chandler with the block. And how about the basketball IQ of Chandler? Just knows exactly when to sky and commit to blocking shots. They're going to be relying on him here late. I mean, just think about it. Hoping to come from behind, he just needs to keep doing what he's been doing. Here's Parker following the basket by LeBron James. Oh, that's Wall's vertical. The D can't let him get room to soar near the basket. Lakers trail by six. Parker with the steal. And here we go. Washington fast break. Parker leading the charge. And the dunk by Parker. And that's how you make a steal count. Turn it into a quick slam at the other end. It was really a case. It looked like Greg Anthony right there, if I, <laughs> if I can say so. It was really a case of a great defensive play triggering some instant mm -hmm. offense. But, but, and, fellas, that's just like it's supposed to work. Don't give the D a chance to set up. Now Wall, 15 points in the game. And it's Parker in the corner. Misses off the right iron. Bradley Beal, he's been the guy making things happen for Washington. He finishes with nine points in the quarter. The D is having all sorts of problems with him. We'll take a quick break and then back to the action here. Let's listen now to head coach Luke Walton review the game plan with his team. Plenty of time. Hey, we aren't going to do it at one position. Get stops. It has to be on the defensive end. I like the way that Luke is, Greg, looking at the big picture. 
I mean, no reason to rush anything. If they take their time here, they can steal this one. And with three quarters behind us, let's see what this fourth period holds in store for us. A moment now to reset the lineups. Back to us by Gatorade. All fueled up here for the fourth quarter. So the Lakers five right now. LeBron and Kuzma make up the forwards. Rajon Rondo is out there with Hart. And it's McGee in at the five spot. Yeah, that was the third straight high percentage look the defense has allowed. The, the defenders have got to start putting bodies on bodies. Free throw no good for Parker. And what a draft day steal for the Lakers who were able to get Kyle Kuzma who had been drafted 27th overall. Yeah, Kuzma came into the league far more polished than anyone expected. And you have to credit the young man's hard work and how he was able to make such a big splash that rookie year. And, and with how hard he works, Kuzma is going to be an impactful player in this league for a long time. And here is LeBron after Trevor Ariza just hit the three. I mean, the passing genius of LeBron coming to the surface. I mean, a look that only a few players in the league can make. And a tremendous Unleash Chaos replay coming to you courtesy of Under Armour, Hover Hammond. Now, here's Portis. Launches it. A reason to luck. But this has not been his best effort. He's lucky his teammates have been there to bail him out. Outside Rondo. It's blocked. Got to have more of this moving forward. Portis has the size needed to turn back shots. Parker outside. Down low. Here's Portis. And it's good in the assist by Parker. Parker's got six assists now in the game. And so it's Rondo bringing it up for Los Angeles. There's the pass to LeBron over Parker. Washington with the rebound. Portis has got six rebounds in the game. And Beal kicks to Portis. Kicks it out to Ariza. Off target from three-point range. I mean, with all these three-pointers he's missed in the first half, I mean, he's become a weight around the neck. I mean, somebody tell he's got to be more unselfish? Washington leading now by 13. They double-team Beal. Another one falls for Washington. I mean, he's been terrific from the field so far this half. I mean, driving his percentage through the roof. LeBron, that's a two-pointer. That's short off the rim. For Washington, they've gotten four of their six shots to fall so far here in the fourth. A pretty nice efficiency there. And he makes that one. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They keep getting it in the paint and continue to score consistently. Timeout called the Lakers. Yeah, and the amount of points they've given up here in the paint, that, that's what they got to talk about. Ooh, this is ugly. No question about it. And you wonder if these matchups aren't favoring them right now. Washington making some changes. Howard's checked in for Green. And John Wall subbed in for Jabari Parker. And over two and a half minutes in the books here in the fourth. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on John Wall. That's his fifth foul. Oh, man. Well, now he's going to be walking a tight line. I mean, one more foul. His night is a wrap. McGee finds James. Lakers working the ball around now. Rondo against Wall. Now, here's Kuzma. Defense right on him. McGee, that one a tad offline to the right, but drops in for him. Well-coordinated shot mechanics, especially for a guy with his length. Well, come on. He's fluid from that medium range. He gets everything working together. Now, here's Beal. I like how Beal draws these type of fouls. Excellent at working the D and forcing their hand.
First one falls for him. And both free throws good for Beal. Here's Hart. Pass to Kuzma. A look at the clock. A little under three and a half minutes gone here in the fourth. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. Lost contact on the shot. And now a three-point play chance as he'll head to the line. I mean, wow. The scoring ability of Bill is so impressive. You know, Chris, Bobby Portis showing continued progress as a scorer. Well, look, he, he can shoot from anywhere on this floor, and, he, and he's 6'11". I mean, just imagine that. But, you know, if you give him starters minutes, well, maybe he can be a 20 and 10 guy in this league. See, Webb, there was a time when athletes spoke up about societal issues and they were simply told to, you know, just stick to sports. Uh, that is no longer the case. Well, basketball was built on players speaking their mind. You know, the one thing about the game of basketball, whether you're from Serbia like my friend Vladi or, or you're from Detroit like me, it's an urban game. And you cannot leave the problems of urban society just because you were blessed with the talent to play basketball. And so many of us speak up on societal issues just because we made it doesn't mean that our friends and family are out of those situations we're not in a bubble in which we don't see how those issues affect us our family or our friends and so just because we're blessed with basketball or abilities sporting abilities do not mean that we're exempt from the problems in society and if we have a platform we can speak out why not and i'm very proud of what guys in the league has done whether it's lebron james and the scholarship program or whether it's chris paul and others or, or steve kerr uh, speaking up for societal issues uh, for me it's refreshing but it also is in the lineage of the greats that started this game in basketball speaking up for the voiceless now a reason after LeBron's three-pointer that didn't go and it's been about that execution offensively I mean they have been superb yeah and it's been a team game a number of contributions guys staying focused that's why the league continues to grow inside and the tough by LeBron and he's just not gonna give up I mean if he has to do it all by himself well, that's what he's gonna do wall passes to Howard it's Beal on the wing. See, Webb, when you look at how basketball is taught at early levels for these kids, middle school and then high school, anything there that you would change? Yes, I would change to developing all players and taking away positions. Interesting. When you were young and you're in, let's say, third grade and you're the tallest player on the team and I make you a center, and I pull you to one end, and I only show you how to make layups. I don't show you how to shoot threes or to dribble. I'm assuming that your body is always going to stay the same. And I believe that coaches should teach great skill set, shooting, passing, dribbling. And when you do that, a player can then become the full player they're intended to be instead of teaching incrementally where a player may get stuck and identified as this type of player his whole time. I think that really what you need to do is teach full skill sets and allow players to develop. Just think if someone would have said, Kevin Durant, you can only shoot layups. We wouldn't be able to see the true unicorn that he is. Wonderful ball. That one falls, so he hits both of them. And it's Rondo with the ball for Los Angeles. To the paint. And the dunk by LeBron flying high and throwing it down with the one hand one of his favorite moves right there guys now here's wall Ariza outside passes it to Beal down low how and he dunks it right over JaVale McGee holy cow I like seeing Beal thread the needle there a fabulous pass in the pick and roll 
And Los Angeles guys uh, shooting 43% from the floor. And here's Rondo to the paint and the slam dunk by McGee. And how about the communication between teammates on that alley -oop? And that's what you need to pull that thing off. And Wall kicks to Howard. Ingram against Beal. He's looking for Howard and finds him. Takes the alley-oop pass and dunks it down. You lob it Howard's way. He'll find ways to finish. That's how talented of a dunker he is. LeBron outside. And there's the feed to McGee. And it's McGee with the jam. Oh, fantastic dunk. And, and he hangs around up there just for a little camera time. Yeah, maybe he didn't want to land awkwardly. Who knows? But there he is, and we see it very clearly. Now, here's Portis. There's the lob to Portis. Ariza with the bucket. Ariza's got seven now in this quarter. He's been a different player since halftime. Coming on strong now. For Los Angeles, they've gone only 6 of 14 from the field in the fourth. McGee with it. Last year, the NBA moved the trade deadline to before the All-Star break, C-Webb. Uh, did you like that decision? It caused teams to make trade decisions much sooner, and I, and I like that. But I don't like the fact that maybe if, let's say, I'm a fan of Utah Jazz, and you trade the player that we love so much, and he's an all-star, and I can't root for him as a Utah Jazz fan. So as a fan, it gets a little bit tricky because that's still my player, and I want to celebrate with this guy at the all-star break, but maybe I can't. But I think that what it does is it makes the teams much more competitive because no longer can you sit back and wait and have the time you could before to think as much as you could. Now you have to make a decision on who your team is, the identity, and do you want to get better now or take the risk now? And I think it's put some teams on the hot seat, and I like seeing teams on the hot seat having to make decisions <laughs> quick. <laughs> Wizards making a switch here. Parker's checked in. Both free throws good from Trevor Ariza. And Chris, Trevor Ariza, a player who does all the little things to help you win games. Steady. I mean, he does the work. He doesn't complain. I mean, he's a soldier. One of those guys who will run through a wall if that's what it takes to win. Now here's James over Ariza. And there's another one for the Lakers. Uh, James strokes it well from there. I mean, his shot is cast right there. You got to respect him. Outside wall shoots from the baseline to the inside, stolen by Bullock. LeBron against Ariza and stolen by Howard. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Ariza. Washington making some changes. Deckers check in for Ariza. Brown comes in for Bradley Beal. And Sadoransky is subbed in for John Wall. The Lakers have gone 7 to 16 from the field here in the fourth. That's about 43%. James finds McGee. And it's McGee with the jam. Oh boy, oh boy, to be young again. <laughs> Makes you nostalgic, doesn't yeah. it? Sadoransky, the pass to Brown. Sadoransky looking around. Nice ball movement by Washington. Here's Decker. Here's Parker. Out to the wing. Let's it go with a three. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Jabari Parker. That is his first foul of the game. Jeff Green. He's checked in for Dwight Howard. And then for Los Angeles, Mike Muscala comes in for Kyle Kuzma. And it's Reggie Bullock in for Ingram. Los Angeles has gotten off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth quarter. The drive by James. It's good. Only a few seconds into the shot clock. LeBron's got 40 points. 
That's his mindset. Attack, attack, attack whenever possible. And Zedaransky kicks to Brown. Inside, trying to find Green. He's got it now. Here's Decker. And it's LeBron James with the rebound. And as he squares up for mid-range, the defender right in his face. Well, he did a great job of staying patient, letting the man make his move, and getting right up on the jump shot. Now, here's Sadoransky. Parker outside. <laughs> Offline with his three. One made three for him for the game. Does he focus closer in? Let's see. Yeah, getting theirs before the defense can set up. Now that's just the aggressiveness of transition, making sure they come away with points. Here's Sadoransky. Compared to when you were playing C Webb, how have the baseline skill requirements for the fours and the fives, the power forwards and the centers, changed, do you think, the most? The ability to stretch the floor. It's a lot more emphasis on the mobility, especially as a defensive end. And I don't think you can have a player who is a specialist anymore in the game. Uh, I played with some great defenders. Uh, the Ben Wallace, uh, the, the Davis uh, boys there in, in Indiana, but those positions are no longer valued or needed anymore. You can no longer be a defensive player that can't score on the other end. You have to be a player in the NBA now with the total skill set. That means mobility, shooting, dribble, passing. All of those things have to be encompassed or is a way to make sure to highlight you with the mismatch and take you out of the game. Good documentation. I like that. Here's Sodoronsky after Rajon Rondo's bucket. Got a piece of it, and it's going to be out of bounds. The Wizards will retain possession. And a new group getting ready to come in for Washington. Howard's checked in for Green. Reza comes in for Sam Decker. Bradley Beals checked in for Brown. And John Walls subbed in for Sodoronsky. Kyle Kuzma's checked in for the Lakers. Brandon Ingram comes in for Reggie Bullock. Wall up top. He's covered by Rondo. Lock at six. Beal dishes the wall. Can't hit from 12. Lakers trail by 20. And as we head to the final buzzer here, a crushing blowout. Big time dominance. And, and this will go in the record books as a golly win for Washington. You don't see this kind of a blowout often, but tonight this is a quality win across the board to deliver out uh, this kind of punishment. They definitely never changed the approach. They just kept after it and showed they were clearly the better team in just about every single category. And so they'll stretch their victory total to 19 on the season. And so they'll take the first game of the season series, a team they'll only see twice, they're certainly happy to start it off with a win. And we watched them all night long. No one could really stop them. Just another excellent game it was for Beal. And the way he was able to dice up their D with his passing really made things easy for everyone else on his team. Now Ariza. After Brandon Ingram missing on that last three-pointer. Nabbing another steal. And that's his sixth steal of the night. Imposing his will at the defensive end. They are enjoying the commanding lead. And it really gives them the opportunity to give their starters a rest. Always critical when you get ready for that home stretch. Count that one. I'll tell you what, the energy in this arena, you can feel it. Well, a well-earned victory feeding off the energy of this hometown crowd really all night. LeBron outside. And so it's Washington easily grabbing this one. They won this game going away. They were the better basketball team by far tonight. And you got to commend this sort of dominance, particularly here at home. It's a great feeling when you play almost a perfect game and to have that crowd be so pumped up. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Thank you, Kevin. Jabari, looks like you're getting back in stride, and you have certainly had adversity with the knee injuries the last few years. How have you been able to battle through them? It's been tough, to tell you the truth, but, you know, the race is not one to the swift, but the one to endure, so I'm trying to keep that motor. You have certainly endured and thrived, Jabari. Thanks for your time. Kevin, back to you. David, thank you as always. And that'll do it, folks.
For Chris Weber, Greg Anthony, and David Olden, this is Kevin Harlan. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you later. Thank <laughs> you.